we started reading the Quran right from the beginning. And we have reached verse 83 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, so I'll, I'll read from here. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. I seek refuge in Allah from the evil whispers of Satan, the rejected one. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I begin in the name of God whose mercy is profound, whose kindness is forever. Waiz akhazna mithaq bani Israel. And recall the time when we took the covenant from the children of Israel. I mentioned at the beginning of the discussion on Surah Al-Baqarah that this particular surah has two parts. In the first part, first passage, the Almighty is addressing the children of Israel, uh, the Jews. And then in the second part, the Almighty is addressing the Muslims. In the address to the children of Israel, the Almighty has talked about some of the important parts of their history to let them know that their claim that they are the chosen people and therefore the rest of the humankind uh, has no hope in the eyes of God while they are the ones who are going to be given not just success of this life but the next life as well. They have been given evidences from their history that that's not true. Although it is correct that the Almighty uh, made them the chosen people in the sense that they were required to believe in and accept God's message that came to them through the prophets uh, whose children they were. But they had the responsibility of understanding that message and following it properly and also letting other people know about it. But as and when, in the history of the children of Israel, they went against their commitment to the Almighty, they were taken to task and punished. So there are mentions of their history that we find in the Quran, one of which is what we are studying today. Why is Ahazna mi Israel? And recall the time when uh, we took the covenant from the children of Israel. So they were proud that they have had a covenant uh, and understanding with God. And God is telling them that let me tell you what that commitment was. La ta'buduna illallah. That you will not worship anyone except God. And you will be extremely good to your parents. So what you find is that uh, time and again, the Quran mentions that like we are expected to worship the Almighty, to be thankful to Him. Similarly, we are expected to be kind to our parents. The reason is that the basic rationale uh, for worshipping the Almighty is that we are grateful to Him for what he, what he has done to us. So when God deserves to be worshipped and thanked, then likewise, parents also deserve to be thanked. They're not going to be worshipped because there is only one God, one Creator. But they need to be uh, they need to be treated with respect and sympathy. And the Almighty said, you'll be extremely good to your parents. It's the same moral impulse of uh, gratefulness that is uh, common in both expectations. Not only the parents, You'll also be good to um, relatives, orphans, and the needy. So the way the Quran has presented uh, its teachings, it seems that all those people who are de deprived in a society, 
people living around you who are not well off, one should, a believer should take them as a part of his, her fraternity's family. That is, they need to be taken care of. If they are in difficulty and trouble, they need to be helped. And that you will speak to people politely. You see, in the Quran, when we have one mention following another, it's not without reason. Uh, there's always a deep uh, binding coherence that's there uh, in the different passages of the Quran. So, although the Almighty wants us to speak to people politely, always, and if we fail, sometimes we have to correct ourselves. But here, what the Almighty is saying in particular is that when you help the poor relatives, other needy people of the society, and the orphans, not only help them, because you know, being good to them means to help them out, to remove their difficulties, solve their problems. So the Almighty is saying that it's not just that He wants you to solve their problems. Furthermore, He wants you to be polite with them. Don't talk to them in a harsh way. Don't create an impression that you are favoring them by helping them out. It's, it's your job. It's your duty. And we also said to you, O children of Israel, that you establish regular prayers and you pay zakat regularly. This is the minimum requirement of God's religion. So, while He would want us to be good to others, to be able to do as best as we can, in performing morally well in this world, uh, the minimum requirement that he expects from all believers is that they should say their obligatory prayers regularly and they should pay the minimum payment that is due on their wealth, zakat, annually. So that is what constitutes uh, the minimum religious behavior, religious obligation. And then says, Then what happened was that you turned away except for a few people amongst you. And you were the ones who were ignoring, turning away anyway. That is, your attitude of turning away was a part of your behavior. So that's what you did. And uh, the end result was that the covenant, the commitment that you made to the Almighty uh, was violated. Verse 84 says, Why is ahazna mithaqakum? La tasfikuna dimaakum. And recall the time when we took your covenant that you will not shed each other's blood. Now, this is another covenant that the Almighty is referring to. So, as I said earlier, their history is described and the Almighty is telling the children of Israel that, look here, don't boast off. Don't brag. Don't try to create an impression that uh, you, you're outstanding humans better than all others and uh, your history is a history of uh, nothing but ach achievements. The fact of the matter is that there have been very ordinary performances, uh, embarrassing, shameful performances on your part. So, so be balanced, be humble, and be realistic and truthful in the manner you approach the message of God. So, the Almighty is referring to another of uh, their covenants and he says that uh, uh, we took your covenant and the covenant said that you will not shed 
each other's blood. Will not kill each other. Wala tukhrijuna anfusakum min diyarikum. Nor will you expel one another from your homes. In other words, you will not fight. You will live peacefully with each other. You will be sympathetic towards each other. You know, something which when people start living together, uh, at times it seems that it becomes more and more difficult. Then you confirmed it. And you yourselves were witnesses to it. That is, when this covenant was uh, taken, undertaking was had from you, uh, it wasn't that you didn't know it or, uh, you know, you were not fully attentive or present. You were there. It is mentioned in the history of the children of Israel that whenever such a co covenant would be taken from the people, uh, and there are mentions about Musa alayhi salam that uh, along with him there would be representatives of uh, notables of uh, the society of the children of Israel who would come and the covenant would actually be taken together in public. Uh, it would be an exercise that was done in order to make sure that each and every member of the children of Israel comes to learn about the fact that God has taken a promise. So the Quran says, Thumma akrar tum antum tashadun. Thumma antum haulai taktuluna anfusakum. Then here you are killing one another. That is, you made your commitment through that covenant. And then, and then what happened was that you are the ones who kill one another. But to khrijuna fariqam minkum min diarehim. And you expel some of your people from their homes. Tazaharuna alayhim bil ismi wal hudwan. Aiding one another by depriving them of their rights and exploiting them aggressively. That is, uh, you took the covenant, but then went against it. You started killing your own people, expelling them from their homes, and asking for assistance of your enemies uh, to be to be unjust to your own people, expelling them, depriving them of their rights, and uh, aggressively uh, causing harm to them and uh, uh, exploiting them. That's what you have been doing. However, when they would come to you as captives, then you would ransom them. So, while there were no problems for you, when you were fighting them, you were expelling them from your land and you were taking help from the enemies. But after uh, a certain while, when those very people belonging to your own nation would come to you as captives, you will show, apparently, uh, show your, uh, you know, religiosity by making payment to uh, liberate them, pay ransom, and get them back. Even though, uh, even though expelling them was unlawful for you. So, this is what you have been doing. That is, first killing and expelling people belonging to your own nation, and then, and, and doing it with enemies, and then later, getting them freed through pay, making payment uh, to for, for the purpose of ransom. The Almighty says, So there is no punishment for those who do uh, such things amongst you. 
اللہ خزن فی الحیات دنیا ایکسپٹ ڈسگریس ان دس ورلڈ لائف ڈسگریس ریلی مینس دیٹ ایف اے نیشن از بینگ ڈیلٹ ود بائی ادر نیشن ان اے وے دس نیشن از ویک اٹ از فردر ویکنڈ ویکنڈ اٹ از ڈیپینڈنٹ آن ادرز اٹ از بیگنگ ادرز فار for help, for funds. It is killed, uh, destroyed, exploited. There's nothing that they can do about it. Even if their numbers are large, it's a, it's a life of disgrace that they are, they are going through. Uh, the Quran says that um, those who are given the Almighty's message They have given their undertaking to him that they are his uh, sincere, diligent followers. But what they do is that uh, they are, uh, they are uh, you know, not, not being loyal to the message. Uh, I, I missed a part, a very important part of the verse. It says, Afato minuna bi baadil kitabi wa takfuruna bi baad. So do you believe in some part of the book and uh, reject the other part? So, you know, in some cases, it seems you are following God's religion and commitment that you've made to him. But in other cases, you don't, you don't care. You're not concerned. When it comes to getting them back by making payment, you're very, you're very uh, active. and uh, you know forthcoming but when it came to fighting with them killing them expelling them you had no problems so what's wrong with you do you believe in one part of the part of the book and you don't believe in the other part the almighty says fama jazaa man yafalu zalika minkum illa khizyun fil hayat ad dunya so there's no punishment for those who do so among you except disgrace in this worldly life. So I was saying that disgrace is, if it, it happens to, it falls upon a nation that claims to uh, be following God's message. That really means that uh, we know what the problem is. Well, the problem is that the Almighty is not enabling them to have respect and is coming to them as a punishment. And this punishment is coming to them because they are not sincere and loyal to the message. They do follow some part of it, but they don't follow the other part. So he says that that is what's going to be the case with such people. Their fate is going to be of khizyun fil hayat dunya disgrace in this worldly life. And on the day of judgment, they are going to be punished uh, even more severely. They are going to receive even harsher punishment uh, on the Day of Judgment. This punishment of life, of, uh, of uh, insult, uh, disgrace, is only uh, the uh, uh, beginning of uh, the, the real punishment, which is going to be in the hereafter. Uh, The Almighty says, And God is not unaware of what you do. That is, your state of affairs, your condition in this life, which is dismal, is uh, not because of any other reason. Don't blame anyone else. Blame yourself. God would never allow a nation with whom he has had uh, a contract, a covenant, whom he has given his own message, to fall prey to other nations, to be destroyed by them, to be insulted by them, disgraced by them. He wouldn't, he wouldn't allow it to happen. Why would he? Is he weak, God forbid, compared to others? No, it's simply because when a nation at adopts the policy of uh, ignoring God's message 
and the commitments that have been made with him uh, and follows only some part of the law, some part of the expectation. Why do people follow some part of the expectation? Well, because, I mean, after all, you've got to justify your identity. And honestly, I have a feeling that to be good to some extent is, is our need. Nobody can live without being good to some extent. But that's not enough. You see, we've got to be consistent. And we cannot deliberately ignore uh, part of the Almighty's law, his expectations, his sharia. So the Almighty has mentioned to the children of Israel, by the way, that your state of affairs that you're going through of disgrace is because of your own misdeeds, your own, your own undoing. And uh, this is what is happening to you in this life. And the punishment in the next life is even more harsh. Uh, most certainly, what happened to the children of Israel is happening to them is also equally applicable to us as well. And if there are any problems that we are facing as an ummah, well, we should look to our performance and see whether we are up to the mark or uh, is it that uh, there are serious moral issues with us that are depriving us to be uh, to be given the support of the Almighty, without which we cannot we cannot perform well. We cannot have a life of respect. The Almighty says towards the end of this passage, these are the ones who bought the life of this world in exchange for the hereafter. That is, these are the people who have preferred this life over the next one. You see, that is what the Almighty demands from his believers. That they should always prefer uh, the... Uh, considerations of the next life over the considerations of this life. It's not that God wants us to abandon this life. He wants us to follow it as best as we can to, to avail it, to benefit from it, to make progress, to do well. But whenever we are faced with a situation where we have to make one of the two choices, either that we do something wrong, evil, immoral and get an immediate worldly benefit and as a consequence ignore the considerations of the next life or the other possibility is that we prefer the considerations of the next life over the considerations of this life by doing what is right even if it means that you know we have to we have to suffer or uh, live with lesser uh, advantages of life uh, that's what preferring the next life over this life means so the almighty says that your behavior uh, that you have been showing talking about the children of Israel and obviously about Muslims as well the Almighty says, it has happened simply because you have uh, preferred, these people have preferred this worldly life or the next life. So punishment is not going to be lightened for them. Nor will they be aided. That is, uh, if this uh, behavior is going to continue, on your part, then be rest assured that the Almighty's uh, punishment that you are facing in this life uh, is also going to continue and uh, the next life's punishment is also not going to be lightened. May the Almighty enable us to understand His message properly and to, to be able to correct ourselves and to reform ourselves in accordance with His expectations.